Hi, my name's Marla. These are earrings that my daughter made. See them? They're tiny little tanagers. And this is Lois. Lois, can you look up here? <coughs> Lois is a great horned owl and she's 21 years old. And we're gonna read a book about great horned owls. This is called Baby Owls Rescue. <coughs> it's by Jennifer Keats Curtis. And the illustrations are by Laura Jacks. One warm <coughs> April evening, Maddie grabbed a bat, a ball, and two mitts to practice catching pop-ups with her little brother, Max. As they trotted toward the back fence, Maddie heard a funny noise. <coughs> what was it? It sounded like fingernails tapping on a tabletop. Clack, clack, clack. There it was again. Maddie was sure it was coming from beneath the pine tree in the far corner of the yard. She flung down her mitt, put a finger to her lips, and shushed Max. As she crept closer, she saw something gray and fuzzy. Were those feathers? Yes, huge, bright, yellow eyes peered up at her from inside a feathery, ruffled little ball. Maddie could see a sharp beak, furry feet, and big, long talons. <coughs> Clicked the baby owl, clapping its pointed bill <coughs> quickly, warning Maddie to go away. Even though the baby owl was cute and cuddly, Maddie and Max knew that it was important not to treat a wild animal as a pet. Fortunately for Maddie and Max, their mother was a wildlife rehabilitator, which means she took care of owls and other wildlife it was, if it was sick and returned it to the wild. Their mother was trained to care for injured wild animals. The children knew that a baby bird on the ground might not need human help. Its parents were probably nearby. Wanting to do what was best for the baby owl, they ran to get their mother. As soon as their mother saw the yellow eyes, she knew what type of owl the children had found. She pointed to the feathery horns, just beginning to grow. It's a great horned owl, she said. She reminded her kids that they had heard a pair of great horned owls calling to each other after the new year. Great horned owls nest earlier than other birds, <coughs> often laying their eggs as early as January, even with snow on the ground. Throughout the long, cold winter, the whole family had heard the Woo, 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 as the parents softly called to each other. Then, once the babies hatched, the parents became silent. <coughs> How old is he, Mom? whispered Max. I think he's a brancher, which means he's just leaving the nest. Why is he on the ground? asked Maddie. What should we do, asked Max worriedly. Their mother smiled and silently pointed up. Near the top of a very tall tree, the kids could just make out a nest. Can you see it there up in the corner? <coughs> it was a nest made out of messy sticks he was either blown out of his nest by those strong winds last night, or he fell as he was hopping branch to branch. Let's see if he's old enough to climb back in the branch, him, back in the nest himself. <coughs> Be careful not to talk around the baby or touch him. If he has too much contact with humans, said mother, it will be too hard for him to live in the wild. As Maddie and Max quietly backed out of the bird's sight, their mother pulled 
on a pair of old heavy brown gloves and gently place the baby owl close to the base of the tree. She hoped he was old enough to use his big beak and large feet to climb up the tree and then to flop and hop his way back into the nest. As his mother lifted the owl, Max realized how tiny the baby really was. He had puffed up his feather to look bigger in an attempt to scare them away, but really he wasn't very big. Max and Maddie had seen animals that might be enemies of a baby owl, raccoons, foxes, and even the neighbor's dog. The safest place for this baby was back in the nest. For several minutes, the baby owl peered at the tree through bright yellow eyes. Then he looked back expectantly as if he were thinking, and now what? He was clearly too small to scale the tree. Their mom would have to give him a hand. Grinny, their mother asked her children to make sure no other animals came near the baby owl as, her, as she ran into the house. A moment later, she returned with a laundry basket she intended to make the baby a new nest. Maddie and Max helped their mother fill the basket with small branches. <laughs> Maddie and Max had seen their mother make a phone call, but were surprised when two firefighters arrived in a shiny red and white cherry picker truck. As they and several neighbors watched, one of the firefighters put on a helmet and climbed into the cherry picker basket. Using her heavy gloves, their mother placed the owl in the basket nest and then handed it to the firefighter. He rose high in the air until he was several feet under the nest from which the baby had fallen. He carefully placed the basket in the crook of the tree and tied it just below the old nest. See him tying it there? To help the owl parents find their baby's new nest, Maddie and Max's mother turned on a CD of owl baby noises. Went the recording. Wait, wait, wait. It worked. As everyone watched, the mother owl soared overhead. The big bird landed on a branch. Ignoring her audience, the mother owl twisted her head and peered into the laundry basket. Powerfully, the mother owl swooped off again to search for a mouse, a gopher, or a lizard to feed her hungry baby. See the little baby opening its mouth? It's saying, ar, ar. those are the noise it makes, just like that. That's the noise it makes when it's hungry. The neighbors filed away one by one. However, Maddie, Max, and their mother and the firefighters wanted to see what would happen next. Just as the street, street lights came on, Maddie spied the mother owl again. Thanks to the glow of the lamppost, everyone could see the mouse tail hanging from the mother's mouth. Max heaved a sigh of relief. The baby would eat. See that little tiny tail sticking from the mother's mouth? So you can just see it. Game on, laughed one of the firefighters. Maddie grabbed her bat. <laughs> Smiling, Max threw a pitch for his sister. Here are a couple of little things to know about great horned owls. They're nocturnal, which means that they like 
to hunt and sleep at night. I'm sorry, hunt during the night and sleep during the day. As you could just see, they eat live little creatures. They eat mice, squirrels, rabbits, skunks, crows, herons, other owls, ducks, frogs, some fish, and even some cats. They swallow small prey hold. Pulp, prey is what, um, what these little creatures are called that they eat. They swallow their small prey whole, but they'll tell larger animals apart using their talons, these are their talons, these sharp little claws, and their sharp, sharp beaks. Here, you can see their talons right here. Oh, this is interesting. They can't move their eyes, but owls can turn their heads almost all the way around to see, almost in a complete circle. These little tufts look like their ears, but owls actually have ears on the sides of their heads, right behind their eyes. Their ears are off-centered, so one's a little bit higher than the other, that difference in height of their ears helps them to judge how far away sound is. They have incredible hearing. Thank you all so much for, for listening. And I hope you enjoyed the book and Lois. <laughs>